As a professional CSharp.net developer, you have to understand how to map data. That basically means how to convert objects from one type to another. For this video, we will use the AutoMapper library, which is commonly used for mapping procedures. So right here, we have an application called Bank Management, and it's basically just an ASP.NET web API. Now chances are that you are here because you need AutoMapper for work or because you want to polish your .NET skills. So I suggest that you follow along or lean back and watch the video until the very end. First of all, we have to for sure import the AutoMapper library. So I'll simply go to the NuGet packages, then click on Browse, search for AutoMapper, then pick the first one, simply pick the latest stable version here, right? Check my project and install it. Hit Apply. Once that's done, we can close the window right here. And now we need to create our two object types. Oh, and if you want to become a job ready software developer, make sure to check out our developer membership. You will learn how to code from A to Z to become a job ready software engineer. As a member, you get access to all of our courses, live sessions and one on one mentorship sessions. Check out the link in the description below or right now in the top right corner. So first of all, let me just create a folder. You don't have to do that, but I want to have that clean. So let's go to data, right click again, and now let's create the first class. So let's just assume that right here we have a bank management application, right? So chances are that we have invoices. So we have a class called invoice. Now in that class, we will have uh, three properties. First one will be the ID. The second one will be any kind of a string for description, right? And the third one will be another property. So let's write down prop. It's a decimal because it's about pricing. It's the amount. Alrighty. Now that's just, if you would use entity framework, for example, that will be the invoice stored inside of your tables, right? You have the primary key, the ID, you have a description and the amount. So this is the entire model. Probably you would have some more of them. Maybe you have some foreign keys, which are linked to other information. Uh, maybe the products of that invoice or whatsoever. But for demonstration purposes, that's definitely fine. Here. So we have that invoice. Now, if you're familiar with more advanced uh, C-Shop development, for example, um, ASP.NET, you probably know about data transfer objects. Let's create one. I will explain what it is just in a second. Let's add a new class, same folder. Well, most of the time you would have a DTO folder, right? But for the sake of this video, we'll keep it as it is. We want to call it invoice DTO data transfer object. And let's just assume that we have a web application with a front end. Now, do you understand that you don't always want to send the sensitive information, for example, the ID or maybe the username to the front and because it's not necessary, you know, sometimes it's better to not send all the information just to reduce the package size so that everything is nice and fast. And also the sensitive information that you don't want to share are not included. That's when you use DTOs. For example, if you would like to show an invoice or all invoices, but we only want to show the description, the amount because the ID is sensitive or we just don't need it, then we would create DTO, right? And that DTO data transfer object, therefore, only contains two properties. The first one will be the description. So let me just change that to a string here and we'll call it description. And the second one will be the decimal amount. So it's pretty similar, but please notice that the DTO does not contain the ID because we don't want to show it, All right? So we have the description and the amount. And now we will start working on the mapping process. And this is basically why you are here. Because the main question is, if we would load those invoices here, we will simulate that later on. If we got those invoices loaded from a database, we would have the ID. But how do we turn these invoices? Let's assume we have a list, say 10 invoices. How do we create easily, as easy as possible, to be honest, a list of invoice DTOs then? Right, we want to make this procedure as easy as possible. And this is why we're using a mapper. Great. So let's see that in detail. Before we can actually map, we have to create a so-called profile for our auto mapper. So the first thing that we do now is to create a profile. You can create a folder called profile. For the sake of this video, I will throw it in the same folder here. So in the class, I will simply call it invoice profile. This is the naming convention. 
got the name of our class, invoice, that's our base class, right? And then we got the profile suffix right afterwards. Let's hit add. Right now, the next thing that we have to do is to inherit our invoice profile from a class called profile. You can see this is coming from the auto mapper namespace. Let's just import it that way. Write down CTOR to create a constructor, hit tap tap. And we only have to call a single method now, which is called create map. Well, not a surprise, right? Create map and we want to map our invoice class to the invoice DTO, don't get confused here, invoice DTO data type. As I said, we have an invoice loaded from our database, for example, using entity framework or whatsoever. And we want to map this to a list of our invoice DTO, which is quite similar, but not exactly the same, right? The invoice DTO is missing the ID field. So that's the profile that we want to create for our auto mapper. We want to have a functionality to turn invoices into invoice DTOs automatically, basically. Great. Now we have created the profile. It's time to now register um, our auto mapper. So go to program.cs or if you have just another application which is not based on ASP.NET, just go to basically any other uh, main method that you're running whatsoever. And let's go to the services here. We simply call builder.services and then dot add auto mapper. Great. Now let's just add the parentheses here and we have to provide the parameter for configuration because we have set up our invoice profile, right? That one right here with that map, what we just did. And we now have to provide the assembly where the auto mapper plugin or library should scan the profiles, right? So we have to say, hey, in that assembly right here, there are the profiles and we can basically just pick our program here because we are in the same assembly. So we can say type of and then program. That basically means that, as I said, we have that project here. We are in the same assembly. So we tell the auto mapper, hey, go ahead, go to the assembly of program.cs. And inside that, because we are in the same project and all of that configured in that way, he will find the profiles. But if you're just wondering what that basically means here, the, um, uh, the parameter, it says, go ahead, go to the assembly of the type program.cs and there you will also find the profile. Scan it that way. Now we are able to actually start the mapping process. So let's go to the controller here and I'll set up a bank controller. Just pretty default stuff right here is a clean API controller, bank controller inherited from the controller base class. It's an API controller, as I said, and inside here we have the constructor and here we have an endpoint, which is called get invoices. So first of all, we now need access to the map. So let's write down private read only, use the iMapper interface, iMapper, and then let's call it mapper. And we will receive it via the dependency injection because we have registered it here as a service, right? Aut uh, at automapper as a service. So we will get it from the dependency injection. We'll get that instance, iMapper, call it mapper. Now let's assign the mapper from the dependency injection to our private read-only iMapper here. And now we can use it inside of that endpoint. So as I've said, now in real world, you would now load your invoices from entity framework, for example. So we would say an invoice right here, let's call it invoice equals to new invoice where we just create a new invoice and then we just set the types here. So we could say ID would be one. We would have the description to be, for example, grocery. And then next up, we would have the amount and the amount could be, for example, 100. Now, as I've said, usually you would load that from Entity Framework, for example, but we don't have it connected and we want to keep it as short as possible. So I'll just create an invoice and let's just rename it. It's an invoice from DB, for example, just to make it obvious. The invoice from DB, that's just some mock data here, right? And now you want to send a DTO, an invoice DTO to the front end, for example, or back to the user, if it's an API, or you simply want to return it for the API request. And in that way, usually what you would have to do without the mapping procedure would be, you would create an invoice DTO, you would say invoice DTO, you would say new invoice DTO, right? And then you would go ahead and say 
you don't have an ID but you have a description equals to invoice from DB dot description. Next I would go ahead and say amount equals to invoice from DB dot amount. So you basically copy over all these things. You know, our data type invoice is quite simple as I said, right? We only have three properties but in real world you would have far more. You would also have dependencies, foreign keys, lists and all of that inside of your data objects. So it would be far more complicated and more copy paste which is also a reason why there are so many errors occurring afterwards because of copy paste mistakes, right? So this is what we want to get rid of and we can. We can just remove it. We can now simply go ahead and say we want to have an invoice DTO. Let's call it again invoice DTO. We simply take our mapper. We set up a mapping profile so we are able to call map and then we want to map our invoice DTO. We map the invoice from DB. So actually we say hey mapper I want to have an invoice DTO and I give you the invoice from the database. Please map that for me. And we set up the profile so he's able to do that. And then we can simply return the invoice uh, DTO just for example, or we have to return an OK and then invoice from DTO. Not a problem at all. We don't have to do that. We can just save it. We can set a breakpoint here and then go through it step by step. Let's just start the application. I've got Swagger set up so he will now bring up a user interface where we can test our API. There we go. Let me just bring that up. I can just open it out here and then click on try out, hit execute. This will start the endpoint here. We can see get invoice, the breakpoint actually stop the application. I can hit um, continue just to move to the next ones or F10. I want to set a breakpoint here. Remove that one now. Just click on continue. You can see we're setting up the invoice. I want to set the next breakpoint. As I said, you can simply hit F10 to jump to the next line of code, but I'm doing that manually by setting the breakpoints now. And if I continue, here we got the invoice from DB. You can see everything is inside. Now we will start the map procedure and we will now, when I hit continue, see that the invoice DTO now has the amount and the string for the description grocery successfully mapped over. So the mapping procedure worked fine. If I click on continue, we'll get back to the web application. We will see the response body now contains the DTO basically without the ID, which proves that the mapping process has worked fine. Alrighty, and that's basically how you set up the auto mapper, how you set up a profile, how you register it for the dependency injection and how you can easily convert objects from one type to another using auto mapper. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel and definitely make sure to check out our developer membership. As I said, you can find the link in the description below or in the top right corner. It's your fastest way to become a job ready developer.